alcohol. Many of us enjoy drinking it. Some of us, eh, a bit too much. Who? Me? Athletes will often abstain from alcohol entirely in a bid to maximise their performance. But why is this the case? I mean, how bad is it? And is it all bad? You know, what are the effects of drinking alcohol on cycling performance and fitness in general? Well, it's time for some GCN Does Science. And yes, I am an absolute genius. I've finally worked out a way that I can justify drinking on the job. <laughs> Taking me a while. We can assess the physiological impact of alcohol on our bodies using wearable tech. Many top athletes, including Tour de France champion Tade Pogaccia, wear a whoop band to track how things such as alcohol affect their performance and recovery. And that is what we're going to use for our experiment. But to understand more, let's delve into the chemistry and biology of what happens when you drink booze. First, let's have a poll. We want to know how much do you drink? Are you teetotal once a month, once a week? every other day or every day. Uh, click down there and you can vote. Alcohol, specifically ethanol, is an incredibly simple molecule with an extraordinarily complicated array of effects. And archaeological evidence suggests that human beings have been consuming alcohol as far back as 7000 BC in China. And even further back than that, as much as 200 thousand BC, it's widely believed that Homo sapiens were consuming fermented fruits. And many of you enjoy a drink of alcohol, and like many of you, I enjoy a cheeky libation here and there. But we're told that if we want to be healthy, we should abstain from alcohol. So let's begin with some science. We first need to understand the chemistry and biology of what happens when you consume alcohol. Now, alcoholic drinks, such as this rather nice Rioja I'm going to enjoy in a minute, contain one very specific alcohol, ethanol. And this is its chemical structure. It's made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. You can see it has two carbon atoms and this OH part of the molecule, that is the alcohol group. Now, if we remove one of those carbon atoms, we get a compound called methanol. Still an alcohol, but this one's really toxic. In fact, if you drink it, you'll go blind. That's because when your body consumes it, it breaks it down first into formaldehyde, and this then gets oxidized in your blood to formic acid, which eats away at your optic nerve. Yeah, bad news. So from here in, when I refer to alcohol, I'm talking specifically about ethanol. Now, although the alcohol we drink doesn't get broken down into formic acid and send us blind, it still gets metabolized into some pretty bad shit. Now, when you first drink it, some of it gets broken down and digested by the stomach, but the majority is digested and broken down and metabolized by the liver. And this is done mainly by an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase, which breaks down the ethanol and turns it into a compound called acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is nasty. I once accidentally caught a whiff of an open bottle of the stuff in a chemistry lab several years ago, and I had to immediately sit down to recover. It's irritant, harmful, and may cause cancer. Lovely. And when you experience a hangover, the main culprit behind the symptoms you feel is poisoning by acetaldehyde. But it does also affect the body in a number of other ways. For example, it inhibits production of testosterone, a key hormone in growth and repair. Fortunately, the body comes to the rescue and produces another enzyme called aldehyde dehydrogenase, which breaks down the nasty acetaldehyde into acetic acid, which you may more commonly know as vinegar. Acetic acid or vinegar can be excreted, it comes out in your wee, or it can be used to form fatty acids or further broken down into carbon dioxide and water, which are gases and you breathe them out. And if I were a betting man, I'd, I'd wager that Mr. Daniel Lloyd is very good at producing aldehyde dehydrogenase. 
And that's the interesting thing. Our response to alcohol is all highly individual. Some people can tolerate and break down alcohol much better than others. And this depends on a whole host of factors from your age, your sex, and your genes. Now, I'm not an elite athlete by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm still keen, like many of you, to find out how alcohol affects my body. So, it's time for some experiments. And yes, I've, I've managed to rope in some of my fellow GCM presenters to do this as well. Now, before we can establish the effects of alcohol, we need to establish what our bodies can do when we've not had any, a baseline. So to do this, we've come to a local climb of ours, near where we live, and we're gonna ride it as a kind of fitness test. We're gonna measure power, heart rate, and we've also weighed ourselves this morning as well. I'm joined by Hank and Connor, and we're at the bottom of the Calder Banner Down, one of our local favorite climbs, and we're gonna ride up it as hard as we can. As a fitness, are you, are you feeling good, sprightly? Yeah, mate, I am feeling fresh and amazing. Me too. Yeah, had yeah. a good night's sleep, uh, feeling sprightly, feeling energetic. Yep, we've got power meters on, we've got the whoops on. Right, let's let's hit it, boys. It's a long climb, this Hank. Don't go too hard from the start. I'm tasting blood. <laughs> Mate, we were, we were giving it. My, so. my legs are shaking. Oh. There's no way I'd have been able to go that deep if I wasn't so fresh. How do you but, feel? Well, I did like <laughs> about 390 watts <laughs> average. And that's when we were fresh. Yeah, right. So what we've got to do now is rest, recover. Then we're going to go on a session and come back and do that again. Right guys, beer's on me. Let's do it. I'm on the red wine. You're on the spirits, I think. As you can see, uh, well, we were planning on going to the pub, but a global pandemic has scuppered that and, and has got in the way. So we're doing the next best thing, which is um, having a Zoom call and, and socially distanced drinking. I'm on the, um, the red wine. I'm on the Belgian beers. And nice? I've got a big... Uh, Kebab as well. I'm not sure the kebab was part of it, but I kind of made it part of it. I was under strict instruction that I wasn't allowed to uh, use or drink what you guys were having. So Ollie took the wine, you took the beer. So I was left with the spirits. Um, and once I've finished a few of those gin and tonics, I'm moving on to uh, one of my personal favorites, which is um, Monkey Shoulder, blended malt scotch whiskey. Well, if you, I mean, if you do enjoy a cheeky libation or, or two, then well, the science says that a drink or two every day is way better for your body um, and your health than having the same number of drinks consumed in a single binge. Um, and this is, you know, also backed up by my own personal whoop data as well. You know, if I have a glass of wine three or four hours before I go to bed, perhaps with dinner. Um, it doesn't tend to impact my recovery. But if I have like three plus glasses of wine, uh, my recovery just drops off a cliff and, and, and I end up in the red. And this is because alcohol has a profound effect on the central nervous system and my heart rate variability uh, lowers and my resting heart rate increases. Hmm. Ollie, has anyone told you how fun you are at parties? Like I was expecting to get the <laughs> drinking games out um, but instead, I've had quite the opposite. I've had a science lecture. I thought we'd be doing dance moves and everything. Anyway, we aren't just having one beer tonight or gin or wine. In the name of science, we're going to have a proper sesh, aren't we, boys? Yeah. <laughs> a proper sesh. Um, thinking about sessions, 
How often do you drink at Grand Tour, Colin? Looking at the F Pro Cycling Team Whoop days from the tour, after the team won a stage, they had a drink or two in celebration. And we can see from the average rest and heart rate, it goes up the next day and the H of E goes down a disproportionate amount, which is pretty, pretty crazy. And kind of backs up my own thinking that if you have a bit too much alcohol in a long stage race, you're not doing yourself any favours. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is alcohol it affects your recovery. Um, you know, know that, but there's other key reasons why it's detrimental as well. So, alcohol is a diuretic, um, which you know means that it makes you go to the toilet. So, drinking too much can lead to dehydration, um, and, and obviously, dehydration affects your recovery as well, and, and that's bad. Cheers, boys. Well, a, a bottle and a half of wine later. I'm, I don't know about you boys. I'm feeling it. Yeah, I don't want. I don't know what to say. I'm. It's definitely gone straight to my head. We're gonna reconvene tomorrow morning. At the bottom yeah. of Banner Down. See we're you guys tomorrow eat. morning. I, yeah. Yeah. If I don't there. make it, guys, just leave me a lot of voice messages. Mm. Yeah, I'll put my phone on the lap. That's nice. Nice. Is it wrong? Right. Bye. Bye. Good evening. Keep drinking. Morning. Adios. Yeah. Morning. <laughs> I feel rough. Um, got a bit of a headache, predictably, and. Uh, yeah, this effort's going to be interesting. Um, I just checked my whoop score as well, and uh, it's rubbish. Got the worst recovery score ever, like twelve percent. I've, ne- I've never, I've never seen one that bad for me. Um, and like my resting heart rate was sixty-five beats per minute last night. It's normally in when I'm asleep, like in the forties, sometimes thirties. So it just shows you like the kind of effect it's having. Um, but I guess yeah, I just need to go and see what if it actually affects my cycling performance. I mean, I'm predicting it will, but who knows? Might not. <laughs> Let's go find out. Oh, God. This is going to be fun. Right, so here we are after our after the night before. How are you feeling? Yeah. I'm ro- ropey. I've got a slight headache, but I don't reckon I'm feeling as bad as you two. <laughs> you seem to go on a bit longer. That's because we actually drank. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm nervous of Hank's kind of, I think we're blagging it a bit. <laughs> yeah, I think he was faking. What was you, what's your recovery score? So I was 24% recovery, my HRV was well down, so yeah. 82, resting heart rate was up to 50, Yeah. and I just feel generally pretty rubbish. Yeah, I got like, the duration of my sleep was actually pretty good, but mm. I didn't recover, like the quality of the sleep was rubbish, and yeah, my recovery score was like 12%. 12%? Oh. <laughs> I win that. Yeah, my recovery score, 45%. Definitely didn't drink. Definitely <laughs> fake. Right, well. <laughs> my, and uh, my sleep was pretty good. I went to sleep in about three minutes and um, uh, Passed out. I slept for eight hours, yeah. All Who's right. going first? Are you ready? Should, I think we should rock, Shotgun, paper, not. scissor it. I'll go, I'll go should first. Should we rock, paper, scissor it? No, I'll go first. I want to get warm. He got, he got us into this mess. <laughs> yeah, you can start. Before I do my second effort, I should point out that we're not overly concerned about the overall time of the effort. That's because things like the weather conditions mean that it could be quite different. What we're more bothered about is looking at the power data and the heart rate data and seeing how that differs when we're in a hungover state. Uh, I should also point out that when we rode up the first time, we kind of raced up together, and this time we're going to do it one at a time just to try and socially distance uh, due to changing situation with regards to COVID. So I'm going to go first and uh, well, wish me luck. I feel horrendous. Three, two, one. more of a headache than when I started. Three, two, one. Am 
I ready for it? Absolutely not. Well, here it goes. Go! Off the line. Not feeling great. Oh God, that was awful. That was really awful. Try not to throw up. What can we say? Oh. The combination of cold air, cold start and alcohol. Oh. I would not recommend it. That's horrendous. All right, I reckon it's time to get back to the boys and check out their results. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I found that utterly horrendous. I still taste blood in my mouth. It was awful. Um, and I've, I've got the results from my run, so I'll, I'll go first, right? I was unsurprisingly slower. Uh, so six minutes 30 last time, an average 375 watts. This time, I was only able to average 355 watts, and I was seven minutes and two seconds. So over just over 30 seconds slower. Not a bad result, Fed, has to be said. So like Ollie said before, we came up at, in six minutes 30. I averaged 380 watts. This time, it was slower again. Yeah, so I did it in six minutes and 50 seconds with an average wattage of three, six, five. Yeah, and I'm actually the same. I was a bit slower too, but not as much as I thought I was. Um, I actually felt okay. I mean, I say okay, I was feeling pretty rough, but I still was <laughs> able to kind of put down the power in the legs and they, I was functioning. Um, so I did six minutes, 42, 12 seconds slower. My power was six watts less. So I did 480 watts average. Um, and my heart rate was 170 beats a minute down. average. So six, six beats a minute. So it Less shows you should drink more often, Connor. <laughs> Not too bad, that. My, my heart rate, as soon as you say about heart rate, my heart rate was higher on this effort. Really? Yeah. So I, I was about 170 beats per minute last time, and I was like 175 beats per minute this time. Yeah, I was higher as well. I maxed out at 190, an average 176, I think it was. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Our rather unscientific experiment shows that, uh, well, if you go out on the lash, you'll probably be slower when you ride your bike the next day. Keep on the aqua. <laughs> <laughs> We've just done a short effort here, but consuming alcohol can seriously affect your endurance too. Alcohol has a negative effect on the water balance in your cells and inhibits gluconeogenesis, a process in which the sugar glucose is formed. Now, it prevents these cells from performing their natural function of producing a compound known as adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, which is the energy your muscles need to contract. If your ATP levels go down, then so will your endurance. And longer term, if you're constantly diminishing your body's ability to perform and recover on a regular basis, this will have a huge impact on your performance. And that considered, if it was my job to try and win the Tour de France, I'd probably abstain from booze entirely. But is it all bad? Well, according to the science, no, it might not be entirely bad. Of course, anything is bad in excess, as mantras for life go, that's a pretty good one. And I just spent an entire afternoon reading an extensive and impenetrable journal article that described over 50 neural pathways in which alcohol affects our bodies. And after reading it, I felt like I need to sit down and a drink. Because, well, that's understandable. Alcohol temporarily relieves stress and many people use it for that exact purpose. And it does this by increasing uptake of a neural transmitter called GABA. No, not that kind of GABA. GABA is the brain's primary inhibitory molecule. And drinking for many people is pleasurable. And the enjoyment and social interaction that people gain from drinking 
cannot be ignored. Happy athletes are fast athletes, and in small amounts, alcohol can also help lower your blood pressure too. But can you stop showing pictures of a Castelli Gabe? Not, not that Gabe. God's sake. And if you are going to drink, then there's increasing evidence that red wine is the way to go. This is because red wine contains a whole cocktail of compounds which can be beneficial to your gut microbes, namely things like polyphenols and resveratrol. And your microbiome loves these compounds. In fact, it's been shown that the microbiomes of red wine drinkers are healthier and more diverse than in non-red wine drinkers. And a more diverse, healthier microbiome is known to be one of the best markers we have for long-term health. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for white wine drinkers or beer drinkers or spirit drinkers. Sorry, if that's your poison. Right. I'm glad that's over. Yeah. I think I need a few months break from drinking now. Yeah, mm. let's not do any more party Zoom calls, hey? Yeah. We hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting. And this is a massive and very complex topic, so I hope you appreciate my attempts to... Uh, <coughs> ...distill it down. Well, anyway, if you enjoy this kind of science content, then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to GCN if you haven't already to help us produce more of it in the future. It really helps support the channel. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.